Brock, did a 49er scout or personnel man make contact with you pre-draft or show interest in you pre-draft or was getting drafted by the Niners a complete surprise? Um, yeah, uh, I did a, a Zoom meeting with Coach Greasy and, and Clay Kubiak. So we had a Zoom set up and you know walked through some plays at Iowa State and whatnot, how that my story and, and how I think, all that kind of stuff. And then um, going into the day, the last day of the draft, uh, Kubiak and Greasy called me and just caught up and said, hey, you know, hopefully we can have the opportunity to take you today at some point. So that was really about it. So those were the first two members of the organization you had contact with? Yes. Did you do any top 30 visits? I did not, no. I know this is, uh, when, it, when you thought that maybe you might not get drafted, was there another team that you were ready to sign with, or had it come to that yet? There was, there was a bunch of teams calling, um, both my agent and I, uh, you know, that had interests and, you know, wanted to, to meet up and, and then obviously had me sign with them and whatnot. Uh, so we had a list going, but there wasn't exactly one team that I was going to go to, you know. Um, this team, yeah, no, the 49ers were on the list, yeah, yeah. Were you preparing for that whole process or were you surprised when you got drafted or how did it um, Towards the end of the, the, the seventh round, um, yeah, we sort of started making a plan and everything of what was going to happen. But um, then uh, I think with like three, three picks left, you know, that's when I got a call. So, yeah, that's how it went down. What was your first impression when you saw the playbook and all the plays you'd have to learn? And where's that education level at now? Yeah. Um, just like the baby steps, like the first level of it and having, you know, Greasy and Kubiak explain the playbook to me and stuff. And I was like, man, this is so different from college, but I just kept chipping away at it. But I remember like, I was so excited back then to, to know it, you know, like get to that point. But it's, uh, it, there's definitely levels to it. You don't just learn it in, over a week or anything. Like it's been a whole process and still I'm not 100% grounded in it yet. I definitely have a foundation, but there's still more that I can learn and grasp. But um, from where I'm at now to where I was, yeah, day one, it's it's crazy. But um, once you know the system and everything, man, it's it's awesome playing in it. You spent a lot of time at your locker going over, I'm guessing, the practice scripts and upcoming plays. Yeah. Uh, how helpful has that been, and why why do you have to do it so much stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've done, you know, for as long as I can remember in terms of you know high school ball, college. Um, you got all these new plays and, and everything going in for different looks of who you're playing that week. So it's not like I can roll out of bed and start, you know, going through plays and reads. It's like, man, you got to study. It's like a test each week. It's a different test. So you have to continue to study for it. And, you know, there's no way of, you know, cutting corners or anything else. You'll, you'll get exposed real quick. So I just want to make sure I'm doing everything I can possible. Your, your the final three was just saying in here a couple minutes ago that uh, the other day you threw the interception, obviously. Juwan could have had it. You felt like you may, may have missed a little bit, but you, he was impressed that you flushed it real quick. Have you always kind of had that ability, or was there somewhere along the way where you learned, like, you got to move past mistakes? Yeah, I think just over my career of playing, you know, high school and college and stuff, um, there's there have been games, in, you know, in my life where I've let, you know, something like that happen and I dwell on it, and then it affects my game, you know, moving forward. But I think uh, really the second half in college, you know, my junior and senior year, Figuring out, like, man, you, you got four quarters for a reason. If something happens like that, like, yes, you allow them to have momentum, but you can flush it and, and get right back on track. So um, I would say in college, definitely, like, definitely learn how to turn the page and keep rolling. So, Rock, your final three years at Iowa State, Charlie Kohler led the team in touchdown receptions all three years. Now, George playing great the last couple of games. What is it about your game that you think hypes up or brings out the best in tight ends and the other way around? Yeah. Um, I think what they do is great. Like both systems that I've played in, um, our tight ends really, you know, they do well in the, in the run game. And then that complements them opening up for play action pass and things like that. And obviously with George, um, he does a great job of, of blocking first and then allowing the pass game to, to open up opportunities for himself. So um, I know that. I really love throwing to, you know, tight ends just because of the mismatch on safeties and linebackers that they have. Like, and then George's, you know, speed and, and Charlie in college for him as well. Like every time it was man, I was like, man, I love going to Charlie, you know, that kind of thing. So um, George and all the tight ends here are the same same way. Like for me, like I love throwing them, I trust them, and and uh, we just go from there. But yeah, I love tight ends. Rock, what, uh, as far as Greasy's coaching style, I mean, where is he as far as hard ass over here, put his arm around you over here, or is he some? Does it depend on the situation of the day? Yeah, um, 
Man, Greece just does a good job of keeping it real. He doesn't, you know, try to tell us one thing just to make you feel good or anything. He wants to win, and he tells us the truth. And he is hard on us, especially in the meeting rooms and everything. Like, he's like, hey, man, you got to get better here. You got to get better here. This is the read. You got to trust it, whatever it may be. But, yeah, if you do a, a good job and make a play, even if it's off schedule, like, he's going to be the first to tell you, like, man, that was awesome, you know. So he does a great job of have, having the balance of, you know, being the disciplined coach, but also, you know, showing love and, and building you up. So he's done a great job with it. It's his first year, but it feels I feel like he's been coaching for, you know, 20. So it's awesome. On game days, you talk to him a lot. Is he your kind of the main guy you communicate with, with in games? I would say, yeah, 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 I would say that just because he's on the bench with us going over to the last drive and what we're thinking moving forward. He gets all the communication from Kyle and, and Bobby Slowick and everyone up upstairs. So um, he, he's the guy that we talk to the most. Rob, first of all, congratulations on winning uh, the Petsu Rookie of the Week. And also, what does it mean to you to share a stat with Dan Marino? Because after the game against the Commanders, uh, you guys are the only quarterback since 1950 to pass for at least two touchdowns and have a passer rating of 100 or higher. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I'm not big on stats and all that kind of stuff, but um, when it's Dan Marino, man, like that's pretty cool. I mean, my dad grew up a Miami Dolphins fan, and then we were all Dolphins fans growing up. And I honest, I wear 13 because of Dan Marino and everything. So to have that kind of stat, I think it's pretty cool. You know, to take a step back and and be thankful and grateful for where you're at. But um, I'm not again, like I said, I don't get wrapped up in it. It's not my driving force or, or goal to break this record or anything like that. It just happens. So, but yeah, very thankful. Well, how was this birthday different for you? How was this birthday different? <laughs> um, shoot, I mean, I'm just like. I'm at work, you know. I don't really have time to go out and celebrate or anything like that. But honestly, this is a great way to spend it with around great guys in the locker room and get to play a sport, you know, for for my job. So I'm very thankful. I'm gonna, that's one I'm gonna expose myself. I haven't had time to Google image yet. But you were 15 in college. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yep. What happened? Who had 13? Um, there was a receiver right when I got there who had 13. So they just gave me 15. Yeah, I just stuck with it for four years. Yep. Is there a South Florida tie with your dad? Um, why, why Marino? He just grew up in Florida, and so his dad, and it like it was during the era of, of Marino taking over, and and uh, so that was their team at the time, and it always has been. And even though I grew up in Arizona, the Dolphins were my team too. Oh yeah, yeah. My dad would always tell me like. You know, when he was teaching me how to throw and everything, it was always, man, you got to have a quick release, like, quicker than that. I'm like, Dad, I don't know if I can, man. He's like, Marino had a quick release. So, but, but yeah, there was some film on Marino for sure on YouTube. Thanks, guys.